everyone, and welcome to this, not only to our Facebook Live, it's also will eventually become a podcast. You know, there, there's so many things going on in the world today, and it's so fast-paced, it's just hard to keep up with all the critical stories that people need to be aware, aware of. We talk about the persecution of Christians in different areas around the world. And what we want to do is with uh, philosopher and constitutional law expert Bruce Fine is bring into focus what is really going on in the country of Nigeria. What we're about to share with you that's going on in the country of Nigeria where almost 50 million people could lose their lives is just going to blow you away. And Nigeria, believe it or not, Nigeria has become the most dangerous place for Christians in the world. And you're asking, what did he just say? Yes. Nigeria has become the most dangerous place for Christians in the world. Bruce Fine, who was there recently, who spent time there, has come back with a startling report. Um, this is his first interview and we're breaking news here. Bruce, tell us what you saw and what is actually going on. Because when we think of Nigeria, we think of Boko Haram and the mm -hmm. kidnapping of children, but it's much more deep and much, much more pervasive than what we know. And not only that, but in just in terms of the numbers, for example, um, when I was there recently, uh, even before my arrival, in the northern Nigerian states, and you've got to remember, 12 of those states have Sharia laws enshrined as their legal code. It's just not advisory. It is the legal code, you know, cut off hands and, and uh, stoning women and that kind of thing. But in these 12 northern states, there was a youth group. It gave a quit order to 11 million Biafrans who reside and have businesses there saying if you don't leave your home and business by October 1 we will destroy you and the government did nothing this is our Hausi Fulani Islam, radical Islamics who made the threat as we're sitting here today that October 1st date hangs like a sword of Damocles over 11 million Christian Biafrans that's twice who perished in the Holocaust Moreover, in the southeast, where the Biafrans predominate numerically, um, the Hausi Fulani are killing children in churches. Uh, just in the last 48 hours, they've begun an assault. It's called Operation Python Dance, where the Hausi Fulani soldiers are coming in. They're taking news. I could put pictures if you had. They've sent to me. They've shot them. They're lying down dead in the water. In, industrial scale and this is because the Hausi Fulani who are very if you want to put a, a, an accurate term almost backward economically and the, the Biafrans are much more educated and skilled economically so they prosper and they reside in much of the oil area of Nigeria and the Hausi Fulani who are radical Islamists youths who have very little you know economically they have to pr they're preying on their christian brethren and the government is doing nothing in fact it's participating with the military are you telling me that the there. president of nigeria has become mm -hmm. a sympathizer to this where you actually can go into religious gatherings churches and you can just kidnap and kill innocent people with impunity with impunity and they say and do nothing they do not for example i mean i am a lawyer i'm suing 16 members of the armed forces, we can't sue President Buhari because he's got immunity, because they have gone in and slaughtered and killed Christian Ebos. It's a pending lawsuit in the U.S. District Court in the District of Columbia. And there's no, no, no sanctions, there's no uh, punishment for any of these uh, members of the armed forces. Boko Haram is tiny compared, you're talking about hundreds, we're talking about millions here. Forget about the government. Why is there not an outcry from the people in the community? Where, why is there not an outcry from people who care, who know some of these children and these families? And why no outcry from the media? Why are we just hearing about this for the first time? Well, part of it, I think, um, Armstrong, is that lots of uh, groups are not sophisticated with regard to the media. And, you know, the media responds to attention-getting efforts. Uh, and when you have basically a boycott and I guarantee if you're a reporter you're not going into uh, Enugu that's the capital basically of, of Biafra um, it, because it's difficult to get there uh, and so they don't cover it and in part too I think President Buhari had done a good snow job he came here about a year ago during the Obama administration he spoke at the Peace Institute of all places while he's conducting war against his own people and it's and you're right the, the idea is well he's fighting Boko Haram so we're kind of 
squint at all the other things that he's doing. We sell him arms, and as from time to time, you know, they, Nigeria has oil. We have, well, we have to keep them, like Saudi Arabia, in our good graces to get the oil flowing. Uh, and it's a total, total uh, uh, marginalization of a whole staggering number of people simply because it doesn't follow into the real politique of the time. How many people have died? Well, tens of thousands. And and it's hard to keep the, you know, the numbers there. I, I mean, if you just look at the, the uh, row on row of these youths, bloody, dead... At, at, you at actually lined saw... Up. Uh, no, they're the pictures. The I pictures just got are, them in the last 48 hours mm -hmm. where I'm being sent mm -hmm. these pictures on Facebook and on Twitter. And there, some of it is video. I, if well, where's the United you know, Nations? Yeah, that is a good question. Where it's like Rwanda all over again, right? They, this is genocide. Nothing. Yeah, it is. Because they're, the definition of genocide is attempting to exterminate in whole or in substantial part because of your religion or ethnicity. And this is both. It's their Christian religion, their ethnicity is Igbos. They want to destroy them, plunder all of their property. And you'd figure, well, where are, where is the United Nations? Where is the High Commissioner on Refugees? And on, on human rights, right now, he is, at least he's, he's deploring Burma's expulsion of, 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 of uh, and I don't want to exonerate them, of, of Muslims into Bangladesh. And this is on a scale that makes Bangladesh Muslims in, in a Tea Party. But you're making um, President Buhari of, of Nigeria, uh, uh, you're describing someone who is as if worse than ISIS. Yeah. He does it under the auspices of his leadership as a head of state. Yeah. I mean, and, and what he's inflicting upon the people of his country is, is, is nothing like we've seen anywhere. Yeah, well, that is exactly right. It's, it's really good. I don't know whether you know me. I'm, I'm a little bit older than you. Maybe I don't look at, uh, you know, the, the, the effort, uh, the Biafran War, 1967 to 70. Two million Biafrans died in, in that war. And it was provoked by similar kinds of sense of, of persecution and marginalization of, of the Igbos, in part because Nigeria really should have never been a country that tried to combine Yoruba and Hausi Fulani and Igbos under a single roof. It just didn't make any sense. Uh, and what you end up with is the majority oppresses the minority, and especially since historically the Hausi Fulani dominated the military, it, they had the guns, and so they just shot and dominated by force and violence and threats and intimidation. But you know, how do we government. stop, for, for, our, for our listeners, mm -hmm. how do we stop the genocide? What, what needs to happen to stop what's going on in Nigeria and bring it to the world attention? Well, what I have suggested and in, in, in encouraging members of Congress, we need to get an international arms embargo on Nigeria, uh, we need to have the UN Security Council designate uh, particular people that should be investigated for the crime of genocide to be tried for the International Criminal Court, which has been done in, in other cases. Uh, we need to get these uh, these people who are complicit in the genocide listed. There's a recent law passed in the waning months of the Obama administration. It's called the Global Magnitsky Human Rights Accountability Act, where the president can designate people who are implicated in gross violations of human rights for a, a denial of visas and their assets are frozen. There's a stigma attached. So those are the efforts that the, the, uh, the your constituents uh, can can recommend to their legislators in Congress and the United States Senate and writing President Trump directly. Because remember, it was President Trump and especially Vice President Mike Pence. He attended, you know, a world summit on persecution of Christians globally in the Mayflower Hotel here in Washington, D.C. in last May, and where he made all these statements that President Trump is going to stand up and against these radical Islamist terrorists who are slaughtering Christians. Well, here's a chance to do so on the strongest scale that's imaginable. And one thing that worries me, uh, Armstrong, among others, aside from the, 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 the sadness and the compassion you have for these families and people being killed and their lives being uh, 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 destroyed, is if Buhari can get away with this with impunity, what s signals does that send to all these other Muslim-dominated radical countries in the Middle East who don't have any price to pay? You know, with all the focus on, on North Korea mm -hmm. and its bloody dictator, I mean, this guy also compares in comparison yeah. to what's going on in Nigeria. Let me, let me ask you this. Is there, is there a tinge of racism to this, the fact that um, Nigeria would be seen as a country 
of Africans. If this were a country where the Buhari was, let's say, a colonialist or uh, a white head of state, would this be a different issue? Do, do they lessen the value of these lives and the importance of this matter because it's an African dictator? Well, I think the answer is yes, as, as crass as that may seem. Well, it's just Africans killing each other, so who like really Rwanda cares about it? Yeah, or yeah. Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, Mugabe, yeah. yeah. It doesn't really matter. You know, human rights are only for, for white folks. Um, and I think that is a, a commentary on the whole, you know, the racism is still a very, very prominent uh, element and in influence Serbian international affairs. Because otherwise, in terms of the, the scale of, of, of what's going on there, see, this is not a tiny 50 million. That's a huge number. That's right. probably larger than three quarters of all the nations who are members of the United Nations. Bruce Fine, thank you for this critical update. I'm Armstrong Williams, constitutional lawyer Bruce Fine. We'll be hearing more about this as uh, in the future. And I'm, I'm, and I'm sure um, this has become your obsession. You want to make sure that the world knows about this before another child has yeah, to it, it gets guy. on the agenda. Absolutely, Armstrong. It's, it's critical. I'm Armstrong Williams. Thank you for joining us.